everyone. My name is Imana. I'm a current second year family practice resident at Grandview Kettering Health in Ohio. I also have my co-resident collaborator, Dr. Patrick Foley, zoomed in as well. Um, so we have this pretty unique case. It follows this three-month narrative of this patient afflicted with calciphylaxis. Calciphylaxis is a rare, um, deadly microvascular disease commonly affecting end-stage renal patients, mostly um, in dialysis-dependent patients. And we see calcified microvascular deposition. It progresses into painful skin ulcerations, necrosis. And penile calciphylaxis is actually among the rarest, um, most harrowing sites. There's high mortality risk and that substantially increases as we see superficial necrosis. And then with uh, penile calciphylaxis, we see increased mortality risk to about six-month mortality rate of 70%. It's quick, it's grim, and there is no evidence-based treatment. So our case begins, we have this 63-year-old male um, with multiple chronic conditions, type 2 diabetes and stage renal disease. He's on hemodialysis, acquired hyperparathyroidism secondary to his renal disease, congestive heart failure, and recently diagnosed calciphylaxis. So at first glance, he's visibly writhing in pain. On exam, he's diffusely swollen with diffuse skin induration, um, tender nodularity, splotches of pink and red purpuric patches on his thighs. And like our patient um, with chronic peripheral vascular disease, secondary calciphylaxis, we see this increased business to skin. So we see more vessels, more collagen, more fibroblasts, chronic vascular insufficiency. It can actually clue us um, towards developing calciphylaxis. So from the legs, we then uncover his drape. We look at his penis. He's uncircumcised. Um, initially, he's able to retract his foreskin. And in this um, picture below over here, um, you can see um, this initial necrosis over the glands, purulence. And then a few days later, he develops painful paraphimosis. CT right below um, shows diffuse penile or, um, arterial calcification. And even though he's admitted for volume overload, we really wanted to focus on a management plan for his calciphylaxis, optimize pain management, and also consult urology for possible penectomy for what seems like his penis is heading towards autoinfarction. So we start him on IV sodium thiosulfate as well. It's an off-label drug for calciphylaxis, which works as a potent antioxidant. It works as a calcium chelator to help reduce calcium buildup and slow that progression of calciphylaxis. Essentially, this summarizes that first admission that we have with him. Um, our main challenges was just pain management, trialing him on multiple opiate combinations. Um, the patient did decline hospice. He wanted to continue dialysis. He was sent home with pain meds. Um, aggressive bowel regimen and uh, with plan to follow urology outpatient. So then about 20 days later, he comes back worsened pain, skin necrosis, and we see that in this photo over here, um, this rapidly progressive prep use necrosis. And just below, we see in the CT at that same site, worsening penile arterial deposition. We start to see ischemic changes also to his left foot. I put that in this top right over here. Um, in his left toes, this dusky red, purple discoloration, it almost worsens day by day. So vascular surgery, urology, vascular podiatry all collaborate to formulate really the best plan. He has so many comorbidities, high risk for post-op complications. And we also remind ourselves that we're also treating a human. We empathize with the patient. He wants to do everything to live, but there is a hesitancy and fear for the outcomes to surgery. Urology did at this point green light penectomy um, during this admission. However, the patient did ultimately decline. He decides on discharge without hospice to continue dialysis and pain management, and he sent home to um, a skilled nursing facility. Then again, this is admission number three. He returns 20 days later. His left foot is drastically worse. And you can see that difference between that photo up above. Um, ischemia, dry, gangrenous changes with multiple large blisters. CT angiography shows severely occluded left lower extremity arteries, which prompts um, left transmetatarsal amputation. Trans um, image eight here is actually that aftermath of the surgery. And now an ominous sign of worsening progression is superimposed infection. 
infection. And this is the primary cause of death in calciphylaxis. And now we see our patient heading towards this direction. His wound culture is result more positive. He started on um, a long course of IV antibiotics, and this is just a temporary fix. So orthopedic surgery begins planning for possible below knee amputation during this time. The patient is then discharged. He's sent to a skilled nursing facility and now awaits further surgical planning. So we still follow our patient. He continues to fail clinical improvement, poor wound healing, persistent skin infections, pain refractory to opiates, um, newer ulcerations. So systemic treatments are there. We started the sodium thiosulfate. There's also bisphosphonates, which have been helpful, but there's no large placebo um, controlled trial for evidence-based treatment. Surgical intervention is there, revascularization, amputation, penectomy. But again, this does not improve patient survival. So maybe we start to think about, is it then appropriate to introduce end-of-life planning, um, include comfort care, discontinue dialysis, aggressive pain management? Again, there's no consensus for a treatment plan. So our case really supports the need for that, more insight, more evidence towards comprehensive management.